ओके नाउ टेन्थ प्रॉब्लम कंसीडर ए वेल इंसुलेटेड हॉरिजॉन्टल रिजिड सिलिंडर दट इज डिवेडेड इन टू टू कंपार्टमेंट बै ए पिस्टन दट इज फ्री टू मूव बट डस्ट नाट अलो एर गैस टू लीक टू द अदर सैड ओके सो इनिशियली वन सैड of the piston contains 1 meter cube of nitrogen at 500 kilo pascals and 80 degree centigrade while the other side has 1 meter cube so it is almost divided into half here so like this okay here 1 meter cube of nitrogen here 1 meter cube of helium other side has 1 meter cube of helium so here pressure was pressure is the here nitrogen side the pressure is uh, 500 kilo pascals and the temperature is 80 degree centigrade and in the helium side it is 500 kilo pascals and 25 degree centigrade okay now thermal equilibrium is established in the cylinder as a result of heat transfer through the piston that means this is conducting conducting piston okay determine the final equilibrium temperature in the cylinder and entropy generation due to the process okay so here the piston is tight enough but free to move tight enough means leak proof that is the nitrogen cannot mix with helium or otherwise but it is free to move so since it is free to move always mechanical equilibrium will be there and it is well insulated it is saying the entire is in well insulated that means there will be no heat transfer from either of the compartment or from the piston to the ambient but since the piston is conducting there will be heat transfer between these two okay so that is the problem in hand in this we have to find the entropy generation also so solution let tf be the final temperature equilibrium temperature okay let us find the masses of nitrogen and helium okay so mass of nitrogen is what nitrogen is yes. 500 kilo pascals into 1 meter cube divided by 8314 by 28 is the specific gas constant of the nitrogen for nitrogen right into The temperature is eighty degrees. That is two seventy three plus eighty three fifty five three fifty three Kelvin. So this is the mass four point seven seven kg. Okay. Similarly, mass of the helium chamber will be equal to pressure is same because of the mechanical equilibrium. Correct. The pressure the piston is free to move. If it is at a particular place, then it means that pressure in the both side will be the same 8314 for helium for helium the molecular weight is 4 okay so molecular weight of helium equal to 4 kg per kilo mole okay so that into temperature is 25 degree centigrade so 298 so that will give the mass as 0.8 Zero seven kg. Now we can also calculate the CV. CV for nitrogen will be equal to eight three one four by twenty eight. That is the specific gas constant divided by one point four minus one. One point four is the ratio of specific heat. One point four minus one, which is equal to seven forty two point three joule per kg Kelvin. Similarly, CV for 
helium will be equal to 8314 by 4 divided by 1.66 minus 1. So, gamma for helium equal to 1.66. Okay. So, now this will be equal to 3149.2 joule per kg Kelvin. So, these are the properties. So, now I can taking the rigid vessel as the system ok apply the first law what is that q minus w equal to delta u ok now what is q entire rigid vessel is insulated so q is 0 since rigid vessel volume will not change in this See individually the volume of nitrogen or volume of helium can change based upon the movement of the piston. But the rigid, the entire vessel if it is taken as system, there is no delta V. So, this also is 0 because delta V equal to 0 rigid vessel. So, entire rigid vessel is the system now. So, that means delta U will be equal to 0. Correct. So, now how will you uh, uh, calculate this delta U? Because we do not know the final condition. Okay, So, we will apply the equation here. Delta u equal to 0 equal to 4.77 into 742.3 into 3. So, let us assume that final temperature is Tf. We already done that. Initial temperature for the nitrogen is 353. Okay, So, this is the mass of nitrogen, this is Cv of nitrogen and uh, this is T nitrogen 1, initial temperature of nitrogen, final temperature is this. Plus, so this is actually delta U is written as delta U of nitrogen plus here 0 0.807 into 3149.2 into Tf minus 298. So, this is basically delta U of helium. So, this is mass of helium, this is Cv of helium. Okay. So, now from this I can find Tf which implies because delta U equal to 0. So, Tf equal to 330 Kelvin. Okay, so please see this. Initially, 353 is the temperature of nitrogen. Helium is 25 degrees, but due to the heat transfer, it has reached a common temperature now, 330. Okay, so helium temperature has raised from 298 to 330. Nitrogen temperature has decreased from 352 to uh, 330, based upon whatever is the masses, etc. Okay, final temperature is got. Now total volume is the same that is V N2 1 plus V helium 1 will be equal to V N2 2 plus V helium 2. Okay, that means here if the piston moves to the right then the volume of nitrogen will increase, but the volume of helium will decrease, but the total volume should remain the same. That is what the volume conservation is in this. Any compartment problem where the piston is free to move, this volume conservation has to be applied. So, now we apply this. Uh, so, how the volume can be calculated? We know PV equal to MRT. So, I write the volume in terms of MRT by P. Okay, now, I know the left hand side volume 1 and volume 2, it is already given. So, this what this is given as 1 meter cube and this is also given as 1 meter cube. So, that is known. So, for the right hand side, I do not know the pressure, the temperature is known, 
because the final state temperature is 330 we have just now calculated but i don't know where is the piston now i don't know pressure also so i cannot calculate this so i try to eliminate one of the variable okay write it in only the uh, pressure terms so i will write this as 1 plus 1 okay the volume conservation 1 plus 1 meter cube equal to 2 equal to here v n 2 2 that is written as m n 2 r n 2 t final divided by p final okay plus m helium r helium t final divided by p final so now i know this values i can directly get the p final implies p final will be equal to 510460.3 newton per meter square or pascal that's it so that is what is asked here final equilibrium temperature and uh, pressure or the pressure also is asked we can do this why you want pressure because you have to calculate the entropy change entropy generation basically what is entropy generation entropy generation so entropy generation basically can be written as delta s system plus delta s surroundings entropy generation is delta s universe that's it so delta s system plus delta s surroundings okay now what is delta s system delta s of n2 plus delta s of helium that is delta s of system okay what is delta s surroundings plus zero why there is no heat transfer here see please understand that the entire rigid vessel is insulated so there is no entropy transfer so we can say that the rigid vessel is isolated basically it is not having any connection mechanically or uh, thermally so there is no entropy change for the surroundings so if i calculate entropy change for the system which is the entropy change for nitrogen and that of helium that is enough for us so what i do here i can apply uh, first if i want to find the cp value of uh, nitrogen equal to 1.4 or nitrogen divided by 1.4 minus 1 which is equal to 1039.2 joule per kg kelvin similarly cp helium can be got as 1.66 or helium divided by 0 0.66 which is equal to 5227.67 joule per kg kelvin so now what is delta s of uh, nitrogen delta s of nitrogen equal to m n2 into cp ln t2 by t1 or uh, i'll say t nitrogen 1 t2 is final temperature tf okay minus or ln or nitrogen this is cpn2 ln p2 by p1 p2 by p1 or p2 is pf p1 is basically nitrogen 1 that is it ok similarly delta s of helium can be written as mhe into cphe ln Tf by The1 minus R helium ln Pf by Phe1. So, substituting these two, I will get S generation, S generated, that is delta S universe equal to S gen equal to 32 joule per Kelvin. So, you have to understand that entropy generation is delta S system plus delta S surroundings. 
okay. So, this is the problem which has basically uh, why there is a inter generation because of the irreversibility in the this isolated system basically see you can see that this isolated system there is no heat transfer but due to some irreversibility see here clearly it is not given that the friction is the piston is frictionless it is free to move that is it. So, probably there is some friction in the system due to which there is a irreversibility that has caused the entropy generation. So, entropy generation is caused only due to irreversibility. This irreversibility basically can be internal irreversibility which is due to friction in this case what we have seen. Also, it can be external irreversibility but is if there is a heat transfer between system and surrounding if that occurs in a finite temperature difference then that will also cause this ok. So, in this case basically there is no heat transfer. So, the delta is surrounding 0 if there is a heat transfer then in the previous problem we have done no the uh, delta s here delta s surrounding equal to q surrounding by t surrounding we have written. If there is any heat transfer that can contribute to the change in the entropy of the surrounding. Since it is an isolated system in this case we cannot have any change in the entropy for the there is nothing uh, entropy transfer due to heat transfer is not there plus there is no in, uh, internal irreversibility in the surroundings also. So, this entropy change of universe will take care of both internal irreversibility and external irreversibility ok. This is about the problem 10. So, 11th problem carbon steel balls density is 7833 kilogram per meter cube and specific heat is 0.465 kilo joule per kg kelvin 8 mm in diameter or annealed. So, annealing is a heat treatment process annealing is the heat treatment process what they do here is they heat the balls to 900 degree centigrade in a furnace in a hot environment and uh, allow them to cool slowly to 100 degree centigrade in the ambient air which is at 35 degree centigrade. So, once you do this, the structure the, uh, the atomic structure of this uh, will change and you will get the required toughness etcetera. So, this is a metal processing or metal treatment process. If 2500 balls are to be annealed per hour determine the rate of heat transfer from the balls to the air. So, basically we are not caring about how it has reached 900 the cooling process is the annealing process. So, how it cools from 900 to 100 degrees in an air environment of 35 degrees ok. So, first one is rate of heat transfer from the balls to the air second is the rate of entropy generation due to the heat loss from the balls to the air ok. So, heating is not uh, the main point here the cooling is the main point here ok. So, solution. So, this is the entropy generation in solid basically solid uh, this mass of one ball one steel ball ok that will be what density into volume which is equal to 7833 into 4 by 3 pi into dia uh, radius square radius cube that is 8 into 10 power minus 3 by 2 cube that is volume ok. So, now that will be 2.1 into 10 power minus 3 kg that is the mass of one ball. So, heat transfer to the air from one ball is what equal to m c delta t which is equal to 2.1 into 10 power minus 3 into c is 465 
I have written in joule per kg Kelvin into 900 minus 100. That is what is the heat loss in air, correct? So that will be equal to 781.6 joules. So rate of heat transfer. So here you can see this is the amount of heat which is transferred basically. But now I want the rate of heat transfer because I wish to anneal 2500 balls per hour. So time is given now. So rate of heat transfer for 2500 balls in 1 hour. What is that? That will be 781.6 into 2500 is the number of balls, right? 2500 divided by 1 hour is what? 3600 seconds. So, this is in seconds. So, this is in total joules. So, joule per second. So, it is in watts. That is 542.5 watts. That is the rate of return, the first, first part. So, if you want to anneal 2500 balls per hour, then this much heat should be lost. So that means you have to design the environment with some convection etc to facilitate this much heat loss. The rate of heat loss is in watts. Now what is second part? What is the entropy generation? Entropy generation is nothing but what? Entropy change for the system which is I will say ball plus or balls plus entropy change for the surrounding which is the air ok now this is basically we have to write in rate at which so rate at which entropy is generated rate of generation so I can say this I put a overhead, overhead uh, dot to represent that this is the rate at which it is done so now for the balls it is basically mass 2.1 into 10 power minus 3 into 2500 into 465 into ln of 100 Kelvin, 100 degrees centigrade that is 373 divided by 900 is 1173. Okay. So, this plus this is a rate at which so 542.5 the ambient temperature is what 273 plus 35 so now here it is mass of one ball it is number of balls n this is c this is ln of t2 by t1 okay now this is heat rejected see this is for surroundings, this is heat received by the surroundings basically, correct. Because ball is cooling, the heat is rejected to the surrounding. So, the heat gained by the surrounding is Q dot surrounding. It is 542.5 watts divided by the temperature of the surrounding which is 35 degrees centigrade. So, 273 plus 35. So, this will totally give S yes, gen as 0 0.985 watt per Kelvin. This is the entropy gen rate of entropy generation okay, due to the heat loss from the balls of the air. So, this is the a simple problem which demonstrates the entropy generation for the solids. Okay. Yeah, here we have to divide by 3600. Okay. So, here um, this divided by 3600. The rate, no. So, uh, rate at which this is the entropy change of the balls, but by dividing by 3600, we will have the rate at which it is done. Okay, So, the rate at which the entropy changes in the balls plus the rate at which entropy changes in the surrounding, that will be the entropy generation. That is the entropy rate at which entropy changes for the universe, that will be the rate at which the entropy is generated. This can be again positive or zero. 